Is this plan the wrong plan? You, look, you're a business guy. I read The Art of the Deal many, many years ago. And one of the things I, I took out of that book that I never forgot was you always said, always be prepared to walk away from a deal up until the last minute. Right. So we're signing off now, 1.3 trillion last week, 410 billion this week, 634 billion as a down payment on nationalized health care. Should we be thinking about walking away from what Barack Obama is proposing? Well, absolutely. I mean, we're talking about numbers that are staggering. Your grandchildren, my grandchildren. I just had another grandchild two days ago. Congratulations. A lot of people are going to be paying a big price. You sort of wonder, the entrepreneur in me says, don't do anything. Now, you do have to stuff the banks because, I mean, they've done a terrible job. But you, have to, you need a banking system. If you don't have right. a banking system, you have nothing. You shouldn't help General Motors other than dip financing. Let them go in. Let them work with their bondholders. Let them work with all their unions because they need a lot of help. And they'll work it out. I don't think we should get rid of the car industry at all. But right. you're actually saving the industry by doing it properly. But I, I just think that maybe we're at a point where instead of spending all this money, we should save money. We should maybe go with tax decreases because, you know, a friend of mine was just telling me that years ago under Ronald Reagan, he got this huge check. He didn't understand it was the same. He didn't get a salary increase. He all of a sudden got a lot more money in his check. And it was the big tax decrease. And mm -hmm. he went out, he spent the money, and the economy was fantastic. It did great under Ronald Reagan. And it did great under Bill Clinton, in all fairness. I studied Reagan. He dropped the top marginal rates from 70 to 28 percent. Remember, inflation was 21 percent. Right. 21 and a half. Right. Inflation out of control. We just lost 10 million new jobs. Frankly, on the numbers were worse than today. And he created 21 million new jobs, doubled revenues to the government. When the marginal rates went from 70 to 28 percent, the Obama plan, it's going to go from 35 to 39.6, and he lets the Bush tax cuts lapse. Well, and also a lot of deductions, like for charity. That's an amazing one. That's you know, gone. Charities are being charities are dead. If you look at what happened with Madoff, what the numbers, the billions of dollars that yeah. this wacko took away from charities, and now you're not getting a charitable deduction. A lot of people aren't going to be able to did give you, to charity. Did you know Madoff? I met him a couple of times in Palm Beach, Florida. Did he ask for your money? Well, he said, why don't you invest in me? And I what said, did you say? Well, it was sort of simple. I said, I can lose my own money. I didn't know he was good or bad. Mm -hmm. And by the way, everybody in Palm Beach, like, they thought he was, if you said, where do you invest your money? They go, Madoff, you know, like right. they went to Harvard. <laughs> you go, I'm with Madoff, like the biggest thing. But he was a disaster. All right, so you got The, the Apprentice. I, I love the show. And I think you enjoy looking at people, getting tough and saying you're fired. It's what, now in its eighth year? It's right. Eighth Welcome season, and it's been a fantastic Welcome success and a great room. rating success. It goes on on Sunday night on NBC. We have Joan Rivers, we have Dennis Rodman, Clint Black, so Andrew many Dice others. Clay. Andrew Dice Clay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's a total wild man. And it's going to be a great success. I mean, it's already predicted to be very high in the ratings. Uh, well, listen, do you love doing it still? I do. I love it. I have a great fun. And actually, it started with Apprentice. And and The Apprentice became the number one show on television. Right. And, you know, they signed me to a one-year contract. They figured Trump would be, what, what is it? In fact, there was one person said, why would women want to watch Donald Trump? And if you don't have a big woman audience, well, it turned out that women watched. I mean, so I was very happy about that. But well, it's been a great success. We're having a lot of fun. And I actually enjoy doing Celebrity Apprentice even more. Why? Because I'm dealing with people that I've watched over 25 years, whether it's Joan Rivers or somebody else, Dennis Rodman, who's a total mess, but he's a good guy, actually. And mm -hmm. He's an unbelievable character on the show. And I'm dealing with people that I've watched over years and years, and now I see him, and I think probably the public likes it even better, too, and you see it by the ratings. I mean, the public loves it because they, they see these characters, and now they really see him exposed. Uh, and, well, which is, you're going to bring the best and worst out of him. It We're is. We're going to see. It is very interesting to see what happens. All right, last question, because people look at Donald Trump, financial genius, wonder guy, he's had a lot of success. And you've had your setbacks at times, but you always bounce back. What do you say to, you know, the person that's living in that house in middle America, that's struggling, that's seeing the taxes go up, jobs being lost around them? What advice do you give them about they, they lost half their, their yeah, retirement? Yeah, it's a tough thing. I, I just say this. If you want to buy a house, this is a great time, even if you don't have much money. You go to a bank. Only deal with banks because they have thousands of houses that they don't want. The houses are being ripped off by the security people that they hire to watch them, okay? Right. All of a sudden, the refrigerator is gone. The security guy says, I don't know what happened, but, you know, he has right. it. Right. So it's a terrible thing. You go to the banks. They don't want these houses, and you make a deal. Get a long-term mortgage. Get a great price on the house. Get virtually 100% financing. The banks will make you a deal. This is the greatest time in history to buy, even if you don't have money. So go to the bank. Make a deal with the bank. Get a low price and a good mortgage. I watched on Neil Cavuto. And you said when, get, when oil was a, um, 
$140 a barrel. You said it was going down to 20. You right. got pretty close. Right. All well, right. it may still. It, but the biggest problem I have, Sean, is that no matter what happens, no matter how well we get, as soon as we get well, OPEC will drain the guts out of us again. Because OPEC raises the Oil shouldn't be at 41. It's 41 today. Yeah. Oil shouldn't be at 41 today. It should be at 20 today. My prediction is right. But you have an illegal monopoly. If you and I have stores and we get together, we set prices, we all go to jail. Sure. You, I, and everybody else. These guys get around. They sit around a table, wherever the hell the table is, and they set oil prices. Now, when the economy, and I always say this, when's the economy getting better? It mm -hmm. can't get better until you destroy OPEC because OPEC will take the guts out of it. As soon as things start going back, look what happens. Interest rates go down, oil goes up. Interest rates go down again, oil goes up again. Oh, wait a minute. Oil shouldn't be at wait 41. Why does every environmentalist, every Democrat, including our new president, we have more oil resources here in this country, oil, shale, anwar, offshore. We can't drill, we can't build refineries, we can't build nuclear facilities. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We need nuclear clear we need it now it's the strongest of all and we need it now we have to do it you look at a country I'm not a big fan of France yeah but look at them I mean they have most of their stuff with nuclear, nuclear. and they 80%. spend two dollars yep I mean it's the greatest thing it's the more it's much more powerful than oil it's mm -hmm. it they have great safeguards now and obviously you need Perfect. the safeguards but you have to open it up but more importantly you have to do something about OPEC because what you're talking about isn't for another 10 years you have to do something about OPEC because as soon as this economy starts to get better OPEC will excuse me screw us again no no doubt about it Donald Trump thanks for being with us thank appreciate you very it much. appreciate it thank, thank you. you no truer statement we have the resources Donald you're dead on we should drill, we should build nuclear facilities, we should build uh, refineries and do everything to wean ourselves off of oil or else we'll always be dependent. I'll tell you, he's right on. I wish Barack Obama would listen to that. And by the way, just a quick reminder, you can send us